What? Go, go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we were doing so Bro. good. Just remember, always crack a cold one with the boy. You drink that. I am a professional drift driver. <laughs> I guess uh, the age of 16 got me into cars, wanting some transportation instead of my mountain bike. <laughs> Pretty typical, but I think what got me into like modifying cars was just that freedom of expression on some type of platform and uh, just, just all the different options that you can put into making a car your own, you know? I played like ball sports, like soccer, baseball. I mean, I was I was like a jock in high school, to be honest. Uh, I played college soccer, and then uh, I got injured. <laughs> Turn of events, moved out to Arizona, which led led me to moving out to California, working at AAM uh, and getting into drifting. Yeah, like just drift and, and started like grassroots, straight grassroots. Nineteen sixty Ford Galaxy Starliner. In a sweeping U-turn, the Starliner demonstrates its new wide tread stability. I love that car. I don't know why. It's just first time I saw that car at Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale. I was just like, dude, that's it. Like that that thing is sweet. Um, mine is definitely far from where I want it to be, but I, I do have it, and one day it's going to be a gangster ride. <laughs> See who is the best-looking Formula Drift driver? Everyone usually just says Alec Honnadale. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's pretty cute. He's a little young boy. You could take advantage of him, right? <laughs> oh, man. Boy, that escalated quickly. Um, Mary, who's like a good dude? Good, like Freddie, maybe? He's like a. You know, he's like, that's like maybe marriage material. Or Ken, Ken Gucci. Like he's a sweetheart, right? Kill. Um, I don't want to kill anybody. No. Oh. Peace. Peace. Working on them? Or oh, fixing them. Not working on them, fixing them when they're broken. Like building them, I love building them, like fabricating all that aspect of it, but then actually just working on like dirty cars. That's the worst thing. Like I'm fine with like working on like race cars, clean stuff, but dude, like changing like an alternator on a 19. 99 Mercury Cougar, that is the worst. Sure. Don't ever promise changing an alternator on that. Most alternators are right on top of the engine. Alternator is underneath the intake manifold, above the axle, like behind the fender well. Like the absolute worst place to put an alternator. Good job. It's closed. No, not open for business, sorry. Why are you closed? Why? Why? Tell us why. Um, I started out, you know, I worked on a lot of cars, um, building RX-7s and, and doing cages, and I had like several employees, but really juggling that and pro drifting, I realized that I was spending a lot of time in the shop and I really wasn't taking much out of it. I was just like supporting my employees more or less and, and giving them opportunities. And I, I feel like I was missing out on opportunities for growing my, my racing program. And since I've really just focused on the racing program and not on uh, working on people's cars, I'm, I'm doing a lot better, to be honest. So Hotline is just basically there to support my racing program. Once in a while, once in a while. I got, a, I got some like, choice pieces of RX-7 stuff that maybe like eventually we can talk about that car right there. Four to six digits, the fame and fortune is highly fictitious. Only exists to those with sick wishes. To achieve it, they often act a bit vicious. It definitely was a ton of fun like learning and building that car, but dude, my car's gone. 
like forever. Like nothing will ever replace that car. You know, I won a Just Drift Championship in, I got my D1 license in that car. I won some Nopi events in that car. Got my Formula Drift license in that car. A couple podiums in Formula D with that car. But I don't know, like, I don't think I would ever build a car that looks like that anymore. I would do like a different variety of that. But I don't know, when, when my boy's old enough, maybe we'll build another RX-7. He'll rock a little RX-7 for a while. Dude, that was tough, man. Um, yeah, that was like right when big power started coming in and um, it would have been really hard to compete in that car continuing on. Now, I'm glad that I had an opportunity to drive for another team with like a bigger power plant and uh, especially obviously getting on the Falcon with a V8 um, like platform with the Mustang. You know, I had some successes in, in 2008 with RX-7. Uh, one of the most memorable battles was in Seattle against Ravi Nishida. And that was when he had that twin turbo Z, which was like big power at the time. And uh, we had an awesome battle, you know? Uh, and that was in my 470 horsepower RX-7 that I built in my garage. So. If that thing was making like, I don't know, like 650, 700 horsepower, it was like huge power back in 08, like huge. Nobody, it was like unheard of. And then, you know, Darren had the, the Sky and, and those were like huge power cars. I think moving forward in like 2009, if I would have tried to compete in the RX-7, it just probably wouldn't have worked. Like I, I would have had to go to like a three rotor platform or a God forbid a V8, like LS or something. <laughs> Man. I love you, Hurt. You're a good dude. Oh man, hurt. Dude, I feel for you, bro. I really hope it works out for you. God, you have like a crazy aggressive driving style. One of the craziest driving styles I think I've ever seen, just like your inputs and like, dude, you're hard on the gas, hard on clutch kicks and just all in. I don't know, dude, I feel like it's just a battle with myself. I think when I'm on, nobody's gonna like take me out. But if I'm off, like I'm gonna take myself out. Uh, it's definitely a battle with myself. It's, it's really like mental at, at that point. Nobody likes you. Not listening. Not listening. 2011 was an awesome year. I'm glad that Dai was able to get a championship. He definitely deserved it. He's been in the game since the day one. Be that close to a championship and have the things that happened happen and miss a championship by that like small amount of points. I mean, I was like 80 some points going into Seattle ahead of everybody and then my car broke and Dai won the event. Man, it was like, it was awesome to be that close to a championship. You know, I definitely would like to have a championship, but to be honest, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if it would have really changed my life at all. Like I would have had a notch on my belt with a with a championship, but you know, this year I have an awesome crew that really supports me, and um, you know, I'm not in contention for a championship this year, but I'm gonna keep on trying. Back in like, let's bring it back to 2011. Back then, I had a car that was a lot faster than everybody else's, and that gave me an advantage. I don't really think, I was a little disconnected with that driving style, but that's how I was pushed to drive in that platform and that's how that car was set up and I was able to adapt to that and create the gap. And to be honest, I think the, it, it's like lackluster for the fans at that point, you know, you, you pull a gap, game over. That was the mentality back then, like just create this gap. But, I don't know, dude, like I'm more about like the style aspect of the sport, like I always have been, and, and it was a little bit difficult to deal with that. But I'm glad that I've kind of gotten back to stylish driving. I think that's how I have the car set up. I mean, it's, it's really easy to tell the difference between my Mustang and the other Mustangs out there. They're completely different, like setups. I think every, anybody that ever goes up against me, they know I'm gonna be straight up like 110%. That's it, run what you brung. No trickery, no nothing. Every time I'm going for it. Long Beach. Right over there. 
Grassroots drifting, I feel like it's starting to come back a little bit on the style aspect. There was a minute I was really concerned with this whole like missile car deal that was going on. Little like story, I had a missile car for one time, like one event. I took it, like put this missile car together, went to Balcony, Larry Chen was like shooting photos. He sent me some photos and I immediately stripped the car and took it to the trash. I threw the car away. Despite having these drift pictures, I was like, dude, this car is a piece of crap. It looks shitty. I think people people started to like think that that was like cool. Like why would you want to like drift a shitty car and like have pictures taken of it? So I'm glad that that, that like phase is gone and it's like back to the like pink Godzilla days. It was all about like making your car look good, but then also like throwing down. Like cars were low, they looked good, they ripped. Drifting is all about style at the end of the day. Like pictures look good when the car looks good. The pictures do not look good when the car looks like crap. There's this facade that you have to have a pro car in amateur drifting. Like you gotta have the big horsepower engine. You gotta have a quick change. You gotta have a dog box. I don't know, dude. I feel like it's really like out of control. Hopefully, you know, maybe like the Just, Just Drift Limited, like that, something like that will like take off where they kind of limit the amount of power or power adders or swaps or whatever so it's more obtainable and really have pure driver talent overcome dollars. If I had to start over, it would be really difficult for me to believe that I could get to the pros. Back when I started, getting to the pros was like all about talent. Now it's like, dude, you gotta have some serious like financial backing behind you. So it makes that dream like almost unobtainable. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you, you you could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. <laughs> Rad. Rad. His name is Crew. BMX is his world. Rad is his way of life. What? So Bro. Good. I'm sure Rob's watched it. 100% hobby, like, I do not want to taint that. That's like my little piece of heaven over there. Like, no ambition to do anything but just enjoy off-roading for off-roading. I do have like an Ultra 4 buggy, so I've kind of like, V8 big angled kid already. Um, I did start out in a Cherokee with 35s and long arm, like rock crawler long arm. But now I have this like ultra four buggy, which is like pretty sick, like king coilovers, bypasses, linked, uh, V8, turbo 400 Atlas. Like, I mean, it's the real deal. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like live both situations. Um, it was an honor and an absolute blessing to be able to drive for Falcon Tire. I mean, teal and blue, like that is an absolute dream come true. It taught me a lot, but it, at the end of the day, it didn't really feel natural. Like not being able to work on the car and being told not to like touch the car was a little bit weird, but I really enjoy like building the car and it doesn't really bother me like doing all the work and like developing stuff. I mean, I was so hands off at when I was driving um, the other Mustang that I was like huge disconnect. You know, having the successes that I did then, I wouldn't change what's going on now. Like I love having my hands on the car. It's, it's me, like the style of the car you know, the wide body, the graphics, like everything about the car is me. That's what drifting is all about. It's all about that like natural style, like that, that freedom of expression, like through your vehicle. Getting back to the first question that you answered, or you asked me, being able to, you know, have that freedom of expression of building it however you want to build it. Everybody has their own style 
And it's just being able to express that through that platform. Dude, I'm living the dream. Cheers. He's still my favorite.